Welcome back to Feature Fanatics, where we talk about all the movies that have us obsessed, excited, and inspired. And we're coming at you with some more Can It Contend segments with the Oscar race continuing. And we're reviewing some of the awards caliber movies in the discussion that we didn't quite get to yet. Uh, and joining us is uh, Chris Tate from Tate's Take. Oh, what's How up? are you Thanks today, for having Chris? me on. No, I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. For sure. So tell everyone, first of all, a bit about uh, your channel and so on and what you do on there. Yeah, for sure. My channel is Tate's Take. You see the merch drop right there. I've had this channel since early 2020. Some of you may remember that year. And I've been covering movies, TV shows, documentaries, reality stuff for the last, I guess, coming up on, on four years. I think my channel's birthday is January 20. 20th 25th around that area so we're coming up on a four-year birthday and i'm um, just really excited to to get on these discussions i try to do um as many live shows as i can or just you know just talk about the awards and stuff like that so yeah i'm happy to be here awesome so we'll be talking about three of the films that we didn't quite get the chance to review when it comes to the award season but it seems like their chances are looking promising and first up we're starting with uh past lives so uh, how long ago did you see this one? Hmm. Past Lives. I saw it came past... out in the summer. Yeah. Then I, I've seen it close to around when it came out. I I mm -hmm. saw it maybe at the end of the summertime. And I recently bought it as a as a fan of the film. If that told you. Yeah. So I, wa <laughs> I watched it in July and I just fell in love with it. Like I, I knew because it was out for a month. I knew all the good things that people were saying. But yeah. it just really touched me. Like it's, it's sort of messages about human connection and so on. And the way it was directed um, so intimately, um, I thought was beautiful. And then I actually uh, was on a flight recently and it was on there. And so I felt like I had to rewatch it. Um, have you gotten the chance to watch it again since you, since you got the disc? No, I haven't. I haven't rewatched it. Again, and actually, it's one of the few. Like, I, I I vary between buying the physical media and the just the streaming online. So I bought it on iTunes, so I have it digitally in in 4K on my on my Apple collection. But I haven't rewatched it yet. But I've been watching a lot of the interviews with like Greta and 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 Celine and stuff like that. So, um, I I'm just a fan of that that type of film, and it's like one of those movies where you can kind of it's like obviously a very niche story, but we all can probably put ourselves in that position of like. Yeah. What if, or like, damn, like, what if I took that job? Or what if I like, didn't break up with that person? Like, what would my life look like? So mm -hmm. I think that's kind of the like, allure of that movie. It's like, you can see yourself in it. Like most people watching it, you know, are probably not from um, Korea. So that's not where they're seeing the connection. It's just like, oh, this is like a familiar story of, you know, childhood love and like friendship and moving on. And, you know, like this, like the overarching theme of like, what if? I didn't immigrate to America. I was born uh, in America, but my parents did. So the whole like two languages, multicultural sort of the examination of that. It's not even the primary, uh, I guess, theme, but it's like it's still very prominent in terms of, um, well, it is very primary in the movie. And Greta Lee is just terrific here. Like I hadn't seen her in much before. Yeah. Um, I guess just Spider Verse, if that counts. Uh, now I'm watching her in the morning show, which I'm catching up on. Uh, but she's yeah. just really, really great because she's sort of like, uh, you can tell like even when they're Skype calling or when she finally reunites with her childhood friend, she has sort of this enchantment in her eyes that she's like, well, like this person's actually like really in front of me again. And she's got not only great chemistry with Tao Yu, but also with John McGarrow, who's great as her husband. Um, yeah. who's pretty cool with everything that's going on. I recently actually learned that Celine's song, like based it on a, on a real life experience that she went yeah, through. It's like, like her re life. Re yeah. yeah. Reuniting with like her childhood friend and burying a white American, I think. And it's not a movie only about romance. Like I wouldn't even call it a romantic movie in a different way, maybe, but it does sort of have like the, this like calm, a vibe to it that I would compare it to a movie that I really love her, which we've actually oh. talked about on the podcast. Like even the score of that is just so sort of like meditative and beautiful. And just even the way it was shot, like it, like it sort of like uh, captures them in like this space with like, wow, we're seeing each other again. What do we do? Uh, which I think is yeah. beautiful. 
for sure. And like, like you said, like it's based on Celine's, like, I guess loosely based on Celine's own life. She did marry someone from New York and American and had, you know, she said that she was actually sitting at a dinner with like in between her current husband and her like Korean childhood friend. So she was just like, okay, this, this is kind of my real life. And like, I forget the actor's name that plays her husband in real life. You just said it. John McGarrow. Yeah. So he in real life is married to, I think also like a Korean person and like, you know, he's dealing with kind of feeling like an outsider, I guess when they first started dating and that kind of stuff like that. So like, there's a lot of like different weird connections that like make the story like more probably authentic for them to like act and film in. So it's just like a lot of cool stuff. I think the scene when they're like Skyping 12 years after she moves away. I think that's where this movie was already solidifying itself as one of my favorites of the year. And it is in the running is like potentially my favorite of this year. Cause when I watched it back again, I just um, felt like all the vibes it was going for. I noticed like how, um, how strong the shots were. Cause sometimes it even lingers on wide shots. uh, Cause it's sort of like going for this atmospheric vibe and just the storytelling when they're like going back and forth with the Skype and everything onward, like their, their discussions. I, I just think it's a beautiful script um, that's brought to life with such an amazing approach. It's one of those, I guess, directorial debuts where you would watch whatever they make next. Yeah. And when you were watching it, I guess for the first time, did you think that this is how it, this will end? Or did you think, were you trying to predict it or were you just, just in the moment? I think in the moment, it's not a movie that's like, that's like, okay, I, for me, it wasn't like, okay, will they get back together now? Like for me, it, I was I didn't think that was going to be possible that she was going to like leave him and get back with, um, with Hey Sung. Yeah. But it was, it was very much like, I guess a movie that takes you in the moment and the ending again, it's not some sort of like declaration of, oh, I should have been with you all along, but it is like this sweet little farewell where he in his own way yeah. sort of declares that um yeah. and then leaves and uh, i guess Greta which Lee, makes it more realistic yeah i think yeah exactly and she has that wide shot at the end and it's it would have been like any other filmmaker would have like gone in for a close-up of her crying but i i kind of think it was sweet that it's just like her walking back uh and then they walk back into the house all in that same shot of like him leaving um yeah. so i guess that brings us into um this movie came out in june and ever since then it's been on people's favorites of the years list including mine um and uh a lot of movies you know it's it's hard to like maintain that momentum uh like to get nominated for the oscars from june but it seems like this movie is already showing a lot of promise so where do we think this is going to get nominated in terms of the oscars yeah without knowing all the categories i think it should be nominated for best picture it should be nominated for direction, and mm-hmm. I guess like is it? It's an original screenplay, so yeah. Is that, yeah, so I think that's good. I mean, I'm sure Greta will get nominated for best like lead actress, but that category is so crazy right now. So like whatever, but yeah, I think just... it's like she's sort of like the fifth spot. It's either her and I guess Margot Robbie and Barbie, maybe Annette Bening in Nyad, sort of vying for that, but. She's showing promise in terms of get, I would want Greta Lee to get nominated. Yeah, nominated is cool. Like I don't think she will win that, but I just I hope the movie yeah. gets some real recognition for people to go out and watch it, you know, mm-hmm. as like kind of like that best picture conversation or that best uh, like screenplay. So, yeah, you yeah, know, it like, got what, nominated. What am I forgetting? Well, it got nominated for directing at the Golden Globes, but there's so many this year that I'm not sure yet. I don't know if it's like a top 3 front runner for directing. I think at this point, it's for sure getting nominated for picture and original screenplay. So along yeah. with actress, I think those are the three nominations it'll end up getting, even though yes. I would have also nominated it for score, but it didn't end up making like the short list. Um, so that really surprised me because it's one of my favorite scores of the year. And then maybe yeah, you could get it for ra- editing. I'm looking but... at my, uh, my Golden Globes ballad here, and I, I, it's not on here for score, like you said, but yeah, best director is, is, you know, that's tough. It's a tough year. It's a tough year all around, but like, yeah. If it can just get one of those like big awards, then it's like, all right, mm-hmm. it's like validated by like not just the like the critics and like the fans. So it's yeah. just like I think it's a movie that has an incredible passion for it. 
uh, even though I don't think it'll get like an insane amount of nominations because this is not as much of like a technical film than like Oppenheimer, Barbie and Poor Things would or even Maestro. But I do think it'll end up getting nominated for picture, actress and original screenplay. Uh, yeah. And I actually, in my opinion, I could see it winning original screenplay right now because I think it would be either that or the holdovers and especially like stories about, you know, like uh, communities that we don't always see, but then also um, just a simple story uh, about connection. I think, you know, they gave her the Oscar for original screenplay, um, which reminds me a bit of that win or again, like first time filmmakers, like they gave it to promising young woman and Jordan Peele yeah. for get out. So I could honestly see it winning screenplay this year. Yeah. I mean, I enjoyed the holdovers, but I think past lives is much better. I, I, and I, mm -hmm. I don't want to rewatch the holdovers. I know people love that movie, but I would definitely take I actually recently rewatched it on Christmas and it's a, it's a great movie, but past yeah. lives would get the edge for me too. Yeah. 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 It's good. I think it, yeah. I think the performances to me are better than the movie. If that makes sense on holdovers, but I really mm -hmm. hope this, 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 this kind of, those kind of categories go to past lives for this one. 